It must feel like your God abandoned you. What? To lose Dr. Holloway after your father died, under such similar circumstances. What was it that killed him, Ebola? How do you know? How do you know that? I watched your dreams. <laughs> Welcome to Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest, the weekly podcast where movie enthusiasts, ex-movie theater projectionists, new and old friends take the time to talk about a movie that we just watched and answer that very question, should or shouldn't you watch this? We have something very special for you today. A tw- This is part one of a 12-part movie review breakdown of the Alien and Predator franchise. Oh, yeah. And we will be watching them in chronological order. I'm your host, Chris Compton. Let's get into our review and breakdown of part one of our series, starting with Prometheus from 2012. What? They're smiling. I think they want us to come and find them. It's a star map. No, not a map. An invitation. From whom? Prometheus has landed. If you're going down there, you're going to die. From the director of Alien, Blade Runner, and Gladiator. This summer, the search for our beginning could lead to our end. Prometheus. This film is not yet rated. Joining me today is reoccurring guests Angry Dane and Dr. Dare. Hello. Welcome back to the show, guys. It's good to be here. They went in. Yeah, I, I didn't have a, I didn't have a beef of that. Yeah, they went in looking for the origin of mankind, and they actually kind of created a new origin, right? The xenomorph couldn't have come to be without all of that happening. So they. Yeah, you got to you got to really describe cool. it somehow. It's got to pull from DNA s- somewhere, like. That's the whole cool thing about the biological weapon that they were creating is it just it takes whatever host and creates something new out of it. Because the one the aliens in the other movies, the hosts are humans, right? Yes. So and in have, this one, it's one of the engineers. But the f- enormous face sucker thing is like half human. Came from her DNA, partially her DNA, right? Shaw's, yeah. Shaw's DNA. So it had more like sleeker look to it i guess humanoid i don't know it just seems like it it is different like i think it's okay that it looks different it makes sense to me yeah yeah and i think people add beef because you don't see it until the last i mean there's a lot of creatures that you see but you don't see the i wish i understood more about some of the other animal life i mean like what what is in the the black liquid does that would they just put that down on earth and it would kill everyone. I mean, is that the whole purpose? Well, and then like, what's with the snakes? Remember those, like they're almost like mealworms that were on yeah. the dirt. Mm-hmm. That was even before the vase things opened up And the, I was wondering if the first snake thing we see is like the DNA of those worms mixed with the black stuff produces that. And then it attacks what was that guy? So it just a starts with the lowest life form and keeps whatever it can get a hold of, right? Yeah, and it makes a new version of it, and then that becomes something to infect the next host. It's just trying so to. So each animal live. that becomes a host would create a slightly different xenomorph because of its different DNA creature. Yeah, yeah. There's a spoiler alert in Alien Three. There's a dog that gets infected, and it becomes like a like an alien dog. <laughs> I don't remember that. It's it's dope. Alien 3 is an awesome show, but I don't remember the dog. Yeah, there's a there's a alien dog in it. But hmm. So I have a question why and I don't know the answer. So we find out that these engineers made us. We we find out that they have our DNA. They went to our earth in the creation scene, the very first minutes of the movie and basically created us. Then they, then we find out later that they've created this biological weapon. And we don't know why, maybe to protect their race or whatever, but we know they were headed to earth with the stuff to, to kill us, to kill us. Why, why, why would they, they create us to kill us? But wait, there's, there's all these parallels between the engineers and humans and uh, humans and 
the like David the what, yeah. what he's a robot he's a yeah what, AI. what what it is to be what does it mean to be human but in the end I mean in the next one I mean what does David become and we he's like an enemy yeah I think that maybe the fact that humans were able to travel back to that that moon and like that's threatening and they need to destroy it another but, thing but I, they didn't they didn't know they were coming that's true so how did they know that they well, were like a threat? But maybe they knew they were too advanced or something i don't know why didn't they come kill us is the question if that before one, then if that one dude was just gonna wake up and fly there and kill all humanity because the snap they had a snafu that yeah was, but there's like a thousand ships so then David just drives to another there, ship and then well, they there fly were only, somewhere? There were only like four because there's four of yeah, those mounds. Yeah, there's four domes. So there are at least four ships we can assume. Yeah, I would say at least four because David And all David those other like guys were dead except – and the one was just still in, in stasis. stasis. Yeah, he's in but stasis. But we know for a fact that there's no other stasis – aliens in the other four ships i don't we think don't. we know absolutely did they have a worse snafu i feel like is that race dead are these all that there are and there is no one else to kill well the earth we is get that some, answered in the we next get one? a little bit more of that you get more engineer stuff lore in the next yeah lore in the next one hmm. but yeah for me it just seems like I had a thought while we were watching it. What if they created our race just so that they could have a host for their biological weapon to make it something even cooler? Why would they need to create a a whole planet of them? Because because they didn't want to kill their own race. They can't. It's like uh, Idris Elba. How do you say his name? I don't know. (laughs) Iris Elba. Iris Elbow. Iris Elbow. When he says they came to that moon because they didn't want to mess with this weapon on their own planet, maybe Earth was just like a testing grounds where it was removed and they were safe from it. They like put Adam and Eve down and so then they, they bounced, have a host. And then they come back and they're like, what did we do? And but then I, they I like to what you're it. saying, Chris. Like that was just, Earth was just a part of the like larger experiment. Dish. Yeah, it's like they're putting mice in a, in a, maze and and then when they come back they're gonna put this stuff in us to you to to make because they they knew they they want their their dna was superior but they wanted to mix it with this biological weapon and then maybe contain this alien but obviously it can't be contained because we see that they had the snafu like you just said and then and then later on it it kills everybody. What it's, is the snafu that they had? So remember when they first go into the temple or whatever, and they see that recording and they're running away. Yeah, but like, they, what happened? They, what are the details of that? Well, I think the black goo got, got out. out. Yeah, but because what did they do? We don't see any like there, there's holes dudes. in their chests when those yeah, two they're guys. All- bursted. When the zoologists and the geologists are left behind, they're like looking at them, and their they find a whole are all pile of engineers with their chests exploded. They all got infected. And, and we were, don't see what those infected things that came out of them. We never see those. I assume they're gone. Like it's been 2000. Didn't they say that it was 2000 years old? Yeah. Where did they go? The aliens? Can, can they reproduce Maybe if they, they don't died. have a host? They didn't kill a single one of them. Those giant dudes. They didn't kill one that they could find on the ship. Wait, what? What? Like if all those things burst out. The I, alien. The alien, the, new the alien. xenomorph. Yeah, the xenomorph. That would be different because it never interacted with the other with the human. It would be right. more like the engineer looking. Yeah. Which is what I think but that's like, what they look like. If they had this snafu, wouldn't you find some of those that they had fought? No, because What's they're all dead. All the engineers are dead. The aliens got bursted out. They Maybe. all got infected at the same time, and then their chests burst at the same time. Exactly. <laughs> the same time, and they were a- unable to kill one. Yeah, that, I can see where you're going with that. I don't know. There's a lot of weird stuff like that that doesn't make sense. But So that's a broader question. Does this... How much of ambiguity in a movie makes things better or, or worse? Like, can you... I, I like having some, but... Even if there's ambiguity in the movie, I like when the director has like a whole explanation 
that he's come up with or the writer or whoever created yeah, the idea. Something we could find at least. Like when they have a backstory or an explanation to me, that makes it way more interesting, even if it's not revealed in the movie. Yeah. Like what, where, like, like in an interview or some article or. Yeah. Or so, sometimes they'll, you know, in director's commentaries or you'll hear about, well, well, just like, uh, in the whole thing with heat, like they said yeah. that the Pacino's character used cocaine, but you don't know that in the movie. Uh, yeah. 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 It's cool but to get like, that info. They create all these bios and backstories for everything. I don't know. But yeah, it would be interesting to know if they if there are actually answers to all these questions or if the person who created it doesn't even have an answer. Well, funny you should ask that. The Blu-ray has over 30 minutes of extended and deleted scenes. Hmm. That'd and be interesting. Ridley Scott was supposed to release a director's cut, but at the last minute he decided not to and said this, the cut that I released is the one it that just, I want you to see. It feels like if you're going to tell the beginning of a story that those details are required. This is, this is how the story began. And all we did is see a very high level kind of, we saw the story unfold a little bit, but, but without any context. So you'd like to me, I'd, I'd like to see some context that I can carry through the rest of the movies. I feel like I just have more questions at the end of this than I, I had at the beginning. And you're saying that you don't like that. You like having some questions. How many questions can you have, Dr. Dare, to be so okay? Many. No, so what I'm saying, what, what's the reasonable amount of questions to I don't have? think it's the amount. You can have a ton, but you should know the core shit. Like in Lord of the Rings, I know there's a group of people destroying the ring. I know what, what the ring did, who it corrupted, how it corrupted, why they need to destroy it in Mount Doom. Like I even can tell from context why the eagles didn't just fly him there. You need the mechanics. You need the mechanics place. here. So you're saying we're missing that in Prometheus. We don't know why the, the alien species is mad at us. We don't know why they created, why us, they the created us, why they created the, the goop. I mean, they had a million little jars of that. You're telling me they don't understand how to handle it. And then they had a snafu. Like, we just didn't get anything. We know we know nothing. We saw a xenomorph birth from a weird creature that came out of the lady that then birthed itself into the xenomorph or into the guy and turned into a xenomorph. That's it. Like we know more from that last scene than we do from anything that they learned the whole other time in the movie. Yeah. It's a lot of questions. Yeah, I mean I like the movie a lot, but like there's so many dumbass things that the, they took their helmets off when they go in. I have so many dumb beefs. Yeah, These are the dumbest smart people ever. Yeah. And all the scientists like <laughs> it, not, it was a horror genre, right? Yeah. Everyone's that, stupid in horror movies. Right? Yeah. Like let's go deeper into the dark. <laughs> Maybe exactly. that's why there was a slash horror so that we could s explain all the yeah, stupid maybe. behavior. <laughs> they're just, they're, scared and making better decisions but like they land they don't do any reconnaissance they only have six hours of daylight and they all rush over and then have to rush back because the storm they didn't know the storm was coming like they don't was the storm from the atmospheric change inside the ship they didn't have a weather report says but it's like the year 2079 and their ship can't tell but it can i mean i just, there's so, so many dumb things in the movie I do have a comment about the the helmets because Ridley Scott actually talks about it. But before I say that, I mean, you at what point do you got to not nitpick the movie to the nth degree to be able to enjoy it? Because there is a lot of <laughs> plot holes and beefs that we could come up with. But I feel like a lot of people like write off movies immediately because like, ooh, let's... That's not really good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have that problem. I'll pick it apart, but I really, I like the movie a lot. Yeah, I did too. It was too. beautiful. Yeah, I thought the it was sets a good movie. were good. It would just be so satisfying to know it a little would. bit more about that world that they built. It, yeah. It's, at, it's coming towards the end of things, 2012. Like, please tie some of this shit up before everyone who did this is dead. Dude, they could have, they for sure could have like a three season Netflix show or some kind of like I would love a horror show about a ship. Have you guys seen any playthroughs or or of of the there's a xenomorph horror game mm -mm, where no. you 
you're inside a ship. There's a xenomorph that's loose, maybe more than one. I can't remember. I only played it for like five minutes and then I immediately was like, I don't like this. <laughs> you were but scared. I, but I've, yeah, but I've watched it. But like you hide underneath a table and it walks by. But then if it finds oh, you yeah. in a hiding spot, it remembers like the AI in the game is one of the best ever. It's you, if you haven't watched it, just go watch a playthrough of the horror. Doesn't it have like game. really great like lighting? Atmospheric, the sound. There's like smoke that comes. I mean, it's it's ridiculously cool. But Video games it'd be a crazy. cool series like The Walking Dead, where they're yeah they could make they're dealing with that. They could make it forever. At least a, at least three four seasons of like eight eight episode run run of each season. Mm-hmm. It'd be dope. Everyone I'd would watch, watch that. it. Yeah. Yeah. Really, Scott? Will you please hire somebody to do that before you die? Thank you. Uh, going back to what Scott said about the helmets, he said they were inspired by Steve Jobs, where he built an office entirely out of industrial strength glass. He says, if I'm in 2083 and I'm going into space, I want something where I have 360 vision. By then, glass will be light and you won't be able to break it with a bullet. So that's why they did that. I think they just did it so that we could see their faces because it's a movie. (laughs) That's why I think they did it. The helmets on the spacesuits? Yeah, because you were talking about the helmets pu- pulling their helmets off in the in when they got inside. They're like, ooh, there's air in here. We can take our helmets also, off. Also, was it made of glass? Because it looked like when it got the acid on it, which would not do anything to glass first, it melted to the guy's face like plastic or like a polycarbonate. So, yeah, it, Ridley, dude, get it together. But that's that's not like acid like we know. It's like... Who knows what it is? It's going to make a rubbery, stretchy glass when it hits Maybe. up. Maybe. Okay. But glass can get all liquidy yeah. if like it's hot. Like when they blow glass. I mean, I've seen ornaments. both seasons of Blown Away on Netflix, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know. man. So I, this is just for me, but the three triangle logo of the Wayland Corporation, while visually similar to that of the actual Weinstein Group, Oh, no. <laughs> is actually derived from a pattern appearing on the wall in the background of an early Ron Cobb production painting of the space jockey for the original Alien in 1979. The logo can also be seen as part of David's foot, uh, fingerprint. The whole Wayland yutani Corp has so much cool design <laughs> around it. It's one of the best parts yeah. of the movies, how developed this, this fake company is. We should have watched the... That teaser. That TED Talk? Yes. The futuristic TED Talk with yes. Waylon. Who's the actor again? I was forgetting Guy, his name. Guy Pierce. Yeah, where Guy Pierce. And wasn't it supposed to be like in 2030 or something? Yeah. Like, that? like in the near future. Yeah. So that brings me to my. I don't have as many beefs as Dr. Dare, but m- one of my biggest beefs that takes me out of the movie every single time is Guy Pierce's makeup. It's really bad. Why did it's just so so maybe it's like old. advanced an, an advanced age that you would never see someone live to naturally. It's not like because he's because he's been kept yeah, alive so long. He's not long. the equivalent of a hundred, he's like the equivalent of two hundred years old. And so I, I don't know. But it he's is taking a lot of weird drugs and stuff to make himself live longer and makes him look weird. He's got a he looks weird like, jaundice color. He looks like the Emperor from Star Wars, but with weird veins. He has a lot of veins on his forehead. <laughs> it and it's like he looks like a bulldog with all the wrinkles. It's like they're they're like symmetrical and like I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't I, like that. Makeup. I hated it. And apparently, it took uh, five hours to apply and an hour to remove it every time that he had to get in it. All right, you guys have any more comments or beefs that we need to review before we get to our rating? I mean, it's be- it's one of the most beautiful movies. When you take some of the visuals with the score and the scenery. They do some like wide shots. Yeah, it's well, when they're beautiful. like walking into the first temple, the and they're like underneath and the, the overhang. Yeah, it looks so awesome, like super crisp, even for like 2012. All the weird iconography is really interesting too. Like that, mm-hmm. um, it was like a depression. It was like a sculpture of the alien mm, in the wall. That was beautiful. Yeah. All those heads, like there were heads up on the mountain. There was that big head in the one room with all the goo. All the hieroglyphics, the writing, the weird like juxtaposition of the 
you know, the rock and mech stuff, but then the weird gelatinous buttons yeah, that yeah. I press and the flute, like and the flute, the flute. To, <laughs> to engage the, the ship. flute. That was insane. Like, what if you had to play a flute to start your car? <laughs> yeah, it's the ocarina of time. <laughs> it's like crazy, dude. Anything else? Parting thoughts? Even though almost none of it makes sense, you should still watch it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't give. I can't give it a golden bucket. No. I I have a proposal. It's too hard to keep the ratings like across every movie ever. I think on these we can we rate them within the thing. within this. Yeah. Like compared to other alien products. Yeah, we're right? not going to compare this to Schindler's List or you yeah, know, like like penis. we did with Rambo. I think that was good. Where so far this is the best alien movie. Yeah. Yeah, because we've like only that. watched one, but but I'm going to rate it just as a standalone movie. I'm gonna, I'm giving it a large bucket. It's not a golden bucket, but I liked it a lot. I liked it better the. I think this is like the third time I've seen this, or the fourth, and I really liked it. It more was better this for time. Me. It, I think it'd be better. Like Ryan, you'll probably you. I would guess you'd like this movie more after we finish and then you come back, because you'll get more context. Is this the first time you've seen this? No, I've seen it. No, but I the rest the of the... Oh. I think I've seen Covenant, but I hardly remember it. And I know I've watched at least part of the very first Alien movie. You haven't seen all of the first Alien? I don't know if I've seen the whole thing. I don't Seven. remember. It was a long time ago. Maybe I watched What did you thing. think? Wow. I mean, this is almost standalone to you then. What, do you th- what did you think? Aside from like wanting to have some of those questions, like there's some things... I feel like would have been really satisfying if they'd have given a little bit more. That's my only problem with it. Really. I thought it looked super cool. All the effects were cool. The design of all the alien stuff is awesome. Mm. The story's interesting. Like, Mm -hmm. yeah, it's super interesting. Like, Oh, the ending is satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. How it all. I liked it. Putting the ship into the alien ship, Idris elbow, Iris elbows character. (laughs) Like that was really cool. It was that was, it cool. was dope, and it looked amazing. That ship looks so cool and mm-hmm. crisp. So you're ra- what are you rating it? Both Pro- of you. Y- you gave it like the equivalent of like a B on your scale, right? Yeah, I'm out of five, so I gave it four out of five. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably do the same. I give it a B. I like it. I think it's definitely a C movie, unless wow. you like Alien. And then it's a B. If you didn't like the Alien franchise and you were just a, this was a, a blockbuster, a summer blockbuster, I don't think it's anywhere near. A yeah, B. there's a lot of a lot of Alien lore that you've got to f- at least know a little bit about. Yeah, again, to the whole, this is the origin story, dudes. Tell us some of the effing origins. Don't give us more questions. We've already seen the other Alien movies. Tie yeah. it up. That's the whole point. But he didn't want to. C for me. C B large bucket. Hit me up on the Twitters or the Instas if you want to interact with the great popcorn priest at popcorn priest. I respond to every tweet, post, comment, hashtag, and whatever else there is. Let us know if there's something else you'd like us to review. Also, if you enjoyed this or any of our other previous episodes, please subscribe so you can get notifications on our newest episodes. Much appreciated. Next week. We'll be continuing our 12-part breakdown. This will be part two. We'll I'm pumped. Watching Alien colon Covenant. I'll bet Covenant does give us a ton of answers. You, uh, you've you seen it? I have. I don't. I only remember the creepy David talking to himself yeah, stuff. Yeah, I can't remember why there's two of him. I seriously don't remember anything except... And doesn't he play more flute? We get some... I just remember Dan More flute McBride. play. Oh, yeah, Danny McBride. That's all I remember. Yeah, dude. Because it's like Danny McBride. Yes. Yeah. 100%. (laughs) And he's not like, he's not funny. He is funny. Oh, there's some funny stuff in it. Yeah, he's Danny McBride still. Yeah, he's like, what was his character in Eastbound and Down? Or is that the name of that? (laughs) Like the baseball player? Yeah. The down and out baseball player? That series is awesome. Dude. He just seemed like him flying a spaceship. To me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Danny McBride from This Is the End. That's yeah. that character is flying. This has been Should You Watch This with the Popcorn Priest. And for Angry Dane and Dr. Dare, 
Thank you for joining us. Peace out. We'll see you next time.